75 minutes. Yo guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Intelligentsia 2023. So for those of you who are new, we are recapping all 10 stages from the 2023 Men's Pro 1 Intelligentsia Cup. This is the this is the highest level of crit racing in the country and uh, to, this year was no exception. I mean, we had all the teams. We had Legion, we had uh, Blazers, we had Aviators, we had Project Echelon, uh, a million other riders, including that guy on my left right there. We're going to talk more about him today. That's uh, Von Rensberg. I always mess his name up. Uh, but he's the South African um, national champion in that white jersey. But let's just take a lap because I absolutely love this course. This is the fourth stage. This is Mundelein. And we are in pretty much the, the main feature of the course here. It is this uh, traffic circle, I guess. Um, this really long, not particularly technical left-hander. But you're always on the edge of your tires. And you can, you can pedal through it even at race pace. Um, and this is where, like, shorter cranks or this is where, like, a, a very intimate knowledge of your equipment makes a big difference because if you pedal through that you're like millimeters away from clipping a pedal um and if you have shorter shorter pedals then um you have even more uh, clearance that's why i always adv advocate for shorter cranks i'm changing to 165 and i'm getting into a topic i actually don't want to talk about i'm going to talk about it in another video which is shorter cranks and why i think they're really important um but maybe maybe uh, let me know in the comments down below if you guys are interested in more equipment content like that i have strong feelings when it comes to crank length but Let's talk about uh, Mundelein, uh, because I got to start right at the, at the end. If we had a rear camera, we would see me basically right at the end of the field. Um, rear camera will be on a little bit later in this race. I was just trying to save battery early on. Uh, but in, in most circumstances, I, this, was, this would be a pretty bad idea. And I'm not claiming it's a good idea, but as long as I'm next to this guy exactly on my right hip right now, uh, who is um, Van Rensburg, I feel a lot more confident about my position because I know he's not going to get dropped if gaps open up which is the danger of being this far back at a high level race if he if uh, if gaps open up um, he's going to close them down because um, he's got he's got that pedigree he's got that strength and he's pedaling through this this uh, roundabout that I was talking about um, so I'm, I'm more uh, comfortable being back here and guys we got shot out of a can in the start of this race the first few laps were just crazy fast I mean look how it's single file right now there are over a hundred riders in front of me and maybe just a handful behind me. So let's fast forward, see how this race plays out. Okay, but first, really quick, wanted to mention the sponsor of today's video, and that is Intelligentsia Coffee. Uh, in addition to supporting this race, obviously the Intelligentsia Cup, they are also this very well-established coffee roasting company, especially here in the Midwest. And guys, I am a coffee snob. I'll be the first to admit it, and I am so stoked to have them on board because I get to drink their delicious coffee. Well, here, I'll just cut straight to the chase. Code NORCAL25 will get you 25% off your first subscription order. If you don't like it after that, just cancel. I don't think you're going to cancel, though, because, guys, it's fresh roasted at your door, which I love, um, and shipping is free. And then here's my favorite thing. They have this tool. You just quickly go through, and then eventually you land on suggested coffees. And you are going to be shocked. If you have not tried, like, third wave coffee, you guys are going to be shocked at the, at the difference in flavor. And you can be a coffee snob just like me. <laughs> but in all seriousness, it really helps support the channel if you use code NORCAL25+. Plus, guys, save that extra time. Just let the coffee come to you. If you don't like it, you can always cancel. Check out the link in the description. Now back to the video. All right, as I'm back here following Van Rainsburg around, um, I'm going to mix it up in the front of the field here pretty soon, and we're going to get there. Uh, but I, I had just this thought I wanted to share. This level of racing, the difference between failure and success, between a result and not a result, has so much to do with your positioning in the pack. I know I keep talking about that in the videos, and there's a reason I keep repeating this same talking point, because it's true. Because the difference in fitness at this high level of racing isn't huge. It's, it's maybe a couple of percentage points. The difference between being in the draft and being out in the wind is like 30%, right? Anybody who's been bike racing knows that. You're doing about 30% less watts when you're in the draft, compared to out of the draft. And it's not just draft we're talking about, too. It's also positioning yourself through corners. If you can take a clean line through a corner, through the inside line, which is shorter, where you don't have to use your brakes, all of those things compound, and they represent way more of an energy savings than the handful of percentage points that separates the truly gifted athletes versus guys like me. I, I will admit it. I am not... I don't test off the charts, guys. I, I've worked hard for a number of years to get... Um, a decent level of fitness, but um, I really rely on those bike handling skills, cornering skills, and pack dynamics. So anyway, that's a long-winded way of saying, let's fast forward to this video. Let me show you some tips I use in order to maximize my energy in a really fast field like this. Okay, so we're still quite early on in this race, 
And one of the first areas I identified as a good opportunity to move up were uh, these series of corners, these last couple of corners, left-handers. And see how everyone's slowing up on the right? I wasn't even pedaling, guys. I just wasn't using brakes. I was at zero watts, and I passed, like, ten riders. It doesn't seem like much, but if you can do that, you know, once every two laps, you're going to move up to the front in no time. And I snuggle up right here on Teammate Ryan's wheel. Teammate Ryan, that's right. I forgot to mention, this is the first stage that Teammate Ryan came out, and we're not in, in Mike's Bikes Purple. And the reason is, uh, the short version is, this is not a Team Mike's Bikes event. So what was cool about this is we were able to use what, uh, whatever equipment we wanted to. So, for example, I'm on my Scott Foil RC Pro. Ryan, I think, is on his Cervelo S5. And then we're both on really fast Rule 28 skin suits, socks, gloves, stuff like that. Um, I'll leave a link to all of the equipment we're using in the description if you're curious. And plus, I made a whole video about this if you want a little bit more information. But back to how to move up efficiently. Um, we're coming out of these last couple of corners. We Everyone just spiked up all this power. And now we're going to carry a lot of speed. Look, guys, we're up close to 30 miles an hour. These races were so fast. We're going to carry all this speed through the start finish. And see how everyone's starting to slow down a coast, even break on the right? Look, zero watts again, moving up, finding space. I talked about this in the Winfield video. The key to moving up efficiently is to continue pedaling. It's a bit counterintuitive because you're using energy. But when everyone else is slowing down, that's when you make your passes. That's the easiest, most efficient way to make passes and get towards the front. Same thing a little bit later on in the race. It's the same. It's actually the same part of the course. Uh, but I just realized that um, I use this area on the course more often than I thought. And yes, I'm using more power now, but I'm not going crazy because the people on the ride are coasting. See how they're all coasting? I'm going to move up a couple more spots even. And that was a... I mean, yes, it was a bit more energy than the last one, but I just moved up 15 places or something like that. And um, you don't want to do it when it's really fast in single file and everybody is pedaling really hard because you'll end up doing 1,000 watts and you make up one spot. That's the difference. That's the pattern you're looking for. Are people coasting? Even better, are they braking? Find space, if at all possible. Here's the pattern again. Riders on the left coasting, maybe even braking. See some space, just send it. Don't use the brakes unless you absolutely have to. Gonna find, you're going to find yourself moving up for free like I just did. Uh, it doesn't always work out. Here's me kind of you know, trying to push it a little bit here. Uh, so so a bit more power here, up to six, 700 watts. Yeah, I made a few passes, but then you can hear I'm on the brakes. And that was, a, that was quite a bit of energy for only like three positions. Kind of broke my own rule there, but I wanted to show you guys it doesn't always work. You can't always find the space. And sometimes you commit the energy thinking there's going to be a space for you to occupy, and then there's not. And that effect ripples. You saw I, I scrubbed speed coming into that roundabout, and now I'm paying for it. I was up at all, close to 1,000 watts a second ago. Now I'm sustained over 700 because of using the brakes. You, you never want to use the brakes. You can think of using brakes as just taking the energy right out of your legs. Remember, consistency is efficiency. I could have done that whole back section of the course at 250 watts average. Instead, I was uh, at zero using brakes, and then I was up at uh, close to 1,000. That, that is the recipe to get dropped. Oh, and Will coming in hot. Uh, if you guys saw him in the rear, I'm going to watch that again, actually. So here he comes up the inside. He's going to carry all of his speed. You can see he's not using any brakes. Consistency is efficiency. He's going to show us what it looks like, and he just slots in. Look, he didn't chop any wheels. He didn't do anything dangerous. Consistency is efficiency. That's what it looks like. All right, so we're about halfway through this race, and um, I want to move up a bit more here. If you fall too far back, um, you find that uh, it's just it's just more difficult to save energy through these corners. It's easier when you're you know top 20. So uh, when I see this rider on my left, um, I'm going to jump on it because as long as you can follow somebody and get that draft, you're going to be better off. But instead of slowing down, one more little push here, just two or three seconds at 600, and I'm going to move up a few more spots. And look at this. I don't have to use any brakes. I just carry the inside line, the faster line, all my speed through those corners in much better position here to get right back up to 30 miles an hour on the start finish straight. And notice that it's only costing me, um, I was around maybe 450, 500 watts to get back up to 30 miles an hour. That's because I carried my speed and my momentum through those final couple corners. You notice my speed exiting the corner was like 26, maybe 27 miles an hour. That means I only need to increase my speed by three miles an hour to get back up to 30 by the time we hit the start finish. Now if we look at a little bit later on in the race when it doesn't go right. Here I am trying to make a pass up the inside and oh, I just get flicked a little bit to the left and I have to scrub all of that speed, all, all of that momentum I was building into the corner and look at my speed now, down to 24 miles an hour. Might not be, seem like a big difference, 24 versus 26, but look, I had to go over a thousand watts to get back up to that 30 mile an hour marker and I'm still kind of dragging here. I'm still, there's a gap in front of me. I'm still just now hitting 30 miles an hour, big commitment and energy. 
What's the difference between 500 and 1,000 watts? It's not just two times as much. It's the difference between sustainable and unsustainable. If you get that wrong, just a, I mean, a few laps in a row, you're going to get dropped. And if you get it right throughout the whole race, you're going to have enough energy left over to contest the sprint finish. So, guys, cornering is so important. And so at this point, I'd finally worked my way up into a decent position here in probably like 15th, 20th position. And uh, my teammate Ryan is around here somewhere. We're very close together. There's 14 kilometers to go. And then, bam, this happens. And uh, here's the thing. I'm taking a free lap. And, and this might be a little bit controversial because the truth is I probably could have sprinted and burned a bunch of matches and gotten back on. I had used a bunch of brakes. I was impeded by the crash. And... Uh, I decided to take a free lap. Now, it's always a risk. There's the official right there on the moto. It's the discretion of the official because I think the rules say something like whether or not you're significantly impeded by a crash. So I could get back to the pit and the, and the moto official could say like, nope, you're down a lap. You're welcome to continue racing, um, but you're down a lap. And also, there's another risk involved because when they let you back into the race, they don't necessarily put you back in where you were. Um, people think it's a free lap and I think there's... It's a bit of a misnomer because it's got the word free in it, but it's not always a benefit. Um, of course, it's better than the alternative of not getting let back into the race at all, but um, you can see in this case when they finally let us back in, I went from like top 20, top 15. They let us right in at the back. If you check out the rear camera, I am at the back of this race. And guys, we have uh, just, we're, we're like 10 or 12 laps to go. So I have a lot of work to do to move back up. I, pro I rolled the dice on that free lap. And luckily, they let me back in. Unluckily, they let me back in towards the back. So I have, a, I have my work cut out for me in order to get back up into position, find my teammate Ryan, and uh, hopefully do some damage in the sprint finish. And here's the important part. We have to move up. But we have to move up efficiently. Now is more important than ever because we're just outside of 10 kilometers to go, and uh, we're seeing a pattern here, right? This is the corner. This is the series of corners, the final couple of corners, where I was able to, to really make up ground efficiently again zero watts carrying my speed through that corner um i could have done a bit better on the exit but uh i just gained like 10 positions at uh at a decent clip and and do what's working like don't try to don't try to um pull something out of your ass in the final 10 kilometers because you feel like you have to there's still a lot of racing left we still have 15 20 minutes left of racing so here we go again the same corner i'm gonna find a little bit of draft here in this rider in front of me I'm just going to come slingshotting past, preserve that speed. We're coming in 32 miles an hour into this series of corners. Guys, when you're on the front, you could come through this thing pedaling at over 30 miles an hour. So, yeah, that one was a bit better. I carried more speed for sure. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to commit some energy here. We're, uh, we're up over 900. Uh, just touched 1,000 watts for a second, but I'm going to continue passing riders. I'm going to continue on the momentum through here because uh, I, I need to make up some more ground. But I'm doing so... In, in an efficient way. I'm carrying my momentum through these corners and um, I, I need to regain contact with my teammate. That's the name of the game through here is once I can find Ryan, we can work together. And here we go again, same corners. This <laughs> is so what a lap later. If you can see a gap, just send it. Don't break unless you absolutely have to is kind of the theme of this video and uh, carried my momentum through that corner, carrying my speed. I'm up at 26 miles an hour this time a lot better. And yeah, we're over a thousand watts, but we're also inside of 10 kilometers to go. So things are going to be fast in general, but I'm going to stay on the gas here, searching for Ryan. There he is on the left. I've made it back up. That was only three or four kilometers. I've made it back up to my teammate. And you can see I'm in the blue train here with Project Echelon. Guess who's in front of them? It's Legion. It's the Blazers. It's um, all of these teams that are, that are leading things out right now, that are keeping things uh, really fast for their sprinters. Okay, so seven kilometers to go. Um, I'm going to, if I remember correctly, I'm going to pop out. I'm going to do 1,100 watts. This is not an efficient way to move up. Can you guys see the difference? I just did 1,100 watts. I was like a sprint, almost a sprint effort, and I made up two wheels. Why did I do that? Uh, I was trying to get on Ryan's wheel. I probably should have just chilled a little bit. I kind of broke my own rule, but I really wanted to get back on Ryan's wheel. We, it's important that we stay connected, or at least we stay within a few wheels of each other here in the final couple of laps. So maybe we'll just take it through here. Let's see if I can... Uh, can talk through the final few laps here because I think this is uh, this must be six laps to go. We're getting down to it now, and like I said, the Blazers, Legion, um, Aviators, maybe there there are several teams on the front with their big nine man leadouts. We're not Ryan and I. Uh, I mean Ryan's strong and all, but um, we can't go up against 
like full squads of nine riders at this point. So we're kind of trying to stay in that bubble. Oh, I got pinched right there, and I lost his wheel. This is uh, this is the um, the type of riding that is required um, in order to stay in contact here in the last couple of laps. You have to be pretty aggressive. You saw Ryan went into the gravel pit back there in the corner number one. Uh, he comes. He has a gravel background. He's not worried about it. But I lost because of just getting pinched right there. I lost you know four or five positions. Very crucial at this point because, like I was saying. Right now, the most important position to be is right behind those big leadouts of Nine Riders, of Legion, Blazers, and that's what these other these are, that's what these other smaller teams are doing. Is they are keeping their uh, their sprinters in that position. This is uh, the Mito Q sprinter in front of me doing this massive seated effort. Dude is so strong in the yellow jersey, and uh, and also in front of me right now. This is the uh, the Aviator sprinter. Um, Lucas, uh, he had a lot of success in this race, so I know I'm in good company because I can see all of these other teams kind of fighting for the um, the end of these leadouts, and this is the position I want to be in. If I can find Ryan even better, because you know strength in numbers, um, we can help each other, uh, we can lead each other out, we can give each other space, we can make sure that we are riding as efficiently as possible. And uh, like I said earlier, you know, now we're just doing a thousand watts out of this corner pretty much every single time because the leadouts are now are making things really fast, and we have nine riders on the front. Um, from several teams. You have riders who are just dedicated to making things as fast as possible, pretty much starting at this point, maybe even a few laps before this. So it's just going to require a lot of power, um, even when you're in the draft, which makes position even more important, even more consequential, because the draft, when you're going fast, is even more consequential. So um, I am dropping back a little bit here, and that is not good. I just lost a couple, two, three more uh, positions through that whole start-finish straight. Instead, I need to be doing the opposite, but I, I need to find the, uh, the little wins, the little efficient ways on doing it, because like I said earlier, guys, I am not one of these, these top one percenters who tests off the charts. I cannot depend on just my fitness alone to kind of pop out in the wind and smash back up to Ryan and then settle in. I have to do it efficiently. So when I see a rider like this coming up on the right, I'm going to try to get in his draft. You can see I made an effort there, but he came around with quite a bit of speed, so maybe Lucas is going to bring me back up there. Those are the wins I'm looking for. If you can do it in the draft, all the better. If you can find a really good line through these corners at this point in the race, even better, even more consequential. Um, put all those things together, and and, uh, and that's how you, uh, you get in a position, still have something left over for the sprint. And then all of a sudden, there's a crash on the right-hand side. Um, Ryan was first to the scene. Let's look at his footage. All right, Ryan's right where you want to be. Like I said, at the end of the Legion train, there's Ty. And you're going to see the Avolo rider fighting for the inside line. And what ends up happening is they, they just go shoulder to shoulder, push the whole field wide, and then Ryan just goes straight into the back of Iman, into the barriers. And without free laps, that's unfortunately the end of Ryan's race. Welcome to Chicago, Ryan. Now let's bounce back over to my footage. And as you can see, I luckily was taking the inside corner through here. But I was also held up, even though I was inside, you can see, we talked about when I was good down at 24 miles an hour through this corner, it was really inconvenient. Now I'm down at 19, and you can see this is basically my sprint I'm doing right now in order to get back up to speed, back on terms with the front riders, because this is the advantage of having the lead out, of taking the front, is you don't have to deal with this. Legion got through, a handful of Blazers got through. They didn't even realize there was a crash. There was no interruption in their speed, and they are off to the races. Everyone else is on the back foot playing catch up. But that doesn't mean the race is over, right? I mean, I have the race leader in front of me. So um, let's uh, let's see how the rest of this race plays out and uh, and see if I can get back into the, the position basically Ryan was in, which is right behind the Legion lead. Everyone wants to be there. Only one or two riders can be there at a given time. But you can see I have my work cut out for me because I am, what is this? Let's look at this corner. I'm maybe 15th, 17th position. Yeah, probably 15th position. But I really need to be like, like 10th. Those five bike lengths are incredibly significant at this point in the race, guys. And that was a big effort I just made. Don't have many bullets left, but let's see if I can make it happen. You can see how fast we're going. I mean, in the draft doing, uh, yeah, six, 700 watts, the power of the lead out. I mean, this is the reason why they are the best in the country at this. Legion can take the front. They can make it uh, over 30 miles an hour for the final five, 10 laps of a race and do it consistently, do it smooth, and then give their sprinters the best possible chances for a win. And uh, the rest of us are all kind of trying to pick up the, the scraps and just trying to be in that position. That was actually a decent corner that I took. But the problem is I should have stayed on the race leader's wheel. Look at him over there. I'm doing 1,000 watts, and he's riding away. That was, um, that was a good wheel to follow. I probably should have just 
like focused on staying on the race leader's uh, wheel. Because look at him now on the right. He's moving up even more. He's taking that, that outside line that I liked. And uh, just like I did at the very beginning of this race with uh, Van Rainsburg, I should have done it with the race leader right there because um, I just lost a few positions more that I, um, that I really needed. Or I didn't lose positions. I just didn't gain positions. And you know what they say in bike racing. If you're not moving up, you're moving back. Um, I'm still decent here. Inside of three kilometers to go, I think this is three laps to go, um, inside of three laps to go, I, I have improved my position um, a bit here. I am maybe 10th, 10th wheel, 12th wheel. Um, and you have to you have to remember, guys, a lot of these riders in front are lead-out riders who are their job is going to be done before the end of this race. So even though there's, you know, 12 riders in front of me, really there's only like four or five riders in front of me because of the nature of bike racing at this level. There's lead-outs. There's, there's riders who are sacrificing their chances for their teammates. So um, the position is better than it seems, but it's still not good enough. I need to get up a little bit further. I should be riding these surges, but, um, man, it's, it's, it's easier said than done. Like, there's, uh, there's Ty Magner. There's uh, the Legion Sprinter. This is the Texas Roadhouse Sprinter. I'm uh, behind the, the Disruptor Sprinter, and um, this is... This is just kind of crunch time. I cannot be losing wheels. This is a problem I had in uh, yesterday's race too, which is, man, with like two laps to go, <laughs> with three laps to go, I'm right where I need to be. Um, and when push comes to shove, those final moments, the most consequential ones of the race, just didn't have that one extra gear I could click. Again, another opportunity to get behind Ethan back there on the right. Project Echelon boys were always good wheels to follow. They always seem to, be, even though there are four of them, five of them, something like that, they always seem to be in good position. You can see them fighting. I think that was uh, Will back there. And look, now riders passing me through the gravel. Like, this is, uh, this is where we're at in this race now, guys. We're inside of two kilometers to go. This is about a lap and a half, and riders will ride that gravel section in order to make a single pass. Throw efficiency out the window at this point. Um, I have to just, even if it's using the rest of my sprint legs, I have to just get into position uh, because it's more important to be in position than to have sprint legs left. If I'm 20th wheel and I have sprint legs left, what's what's the point? You know, I'd rather be dead tired exactly where I need to be. So yeah, 1,000 watts, getting pushed a little bit wide. I just need to get out in the wind and send it right here, but easier said than done. And guys, I was just seeing cross-side. Oh, here's a wheel. Get on this. Okay, okay, I'm getting on this. I was waiting for somebody to do this instead of me. If I can just have another rider cut through the wind instead of me, that would be so much better because, guys, we're, we're quickly approaching one to go. We're about to hit Bell Lap. Look how fast it is. We're single file going 31 miles an hour through this final corner. There's a lead out, lead out rider for Legion peeling off on the right. So they're just burning through the riders at this point. I'm doing uh, close to 1,100 watts here in the draft. This rider in front of me. Um, needs to make connection to that rider and it looks like he's he's tied up a little bit but he's uh, he's coming around and and this is when the gaps start to open up and this is when it can become really dangerous because the front handful of riders the front looks like eight or ten riders are just pulling away and I try to pass on the right side but I just don't quite make it and that little gap you see right there ends up kind of biting me because I'm able to just barely close it down before the front camera shuts off but then another split happens, so um, yeah, we don't see it. Uh, unfortunately, the front camera runs out of batteries, but there um, there are just more splits and more gaps opening up as the final leadout guys are taking their um, their last pulls on the front for their sprinters. And at this point, there are just too many gaps in front of me. I am doing everything I can. You can see I'm uh, over 800 watts, over a thousand watts here, just trying to close down these little gaps that are opening up, and effectively leading out these riders behind me in the process. But uh, yeah, another Legion rider pulling off, and um, I end up just kind of rolling in here uh, as fast as I possibly can. I'm, I'm using the, the rest of my energy, going to roll in here for um, a top 20 position. I think it was 16th in the end. Wasn't able to hold that front bubble of um, about, yeah, 10 or 12 riders and uh, contest the sprint finish, unfortunately, on this day. But hang in there, guys, because we have six more stages of high-level crit racing at the Intelligentsia Cup. And if you like this sort of content, I did a full 75-minute podcast style throughout this entire race, uncut, unedited, with Will from Project Echelon. So um, check out the link in the description. I encourage you to go check that out. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.